This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to divide rational expressions. So here I have a division sign and I have two fractions. Fractions mean ratio, so they're called rational expressions. So to divide them is a very simple technique. You take the division sign, you change the multiplication, and you flip the second fraction. All right, so in other words, I'm going to leave the first fraction alone. I'm going to leave it 2x minus 14. And I'm going to leave that as an x squared minus 4x minus 12. Changes to a multiplication problem. So I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to put the denominator in the numerator and the numerator in the new denominator. Once that is done, now the problem is exactly like our other video which explained how to multiply fractions. So the next step we are going to factor. So here I have, uh, let's see, I can divide those by two. So I'm going to use one set of parentheses. So I divided those numbers by two. All right, now I'm going to cross this out so I know it's done. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? I'll save the crossing out towards the end in case it's just visually neat to look at. And at the end, I'll change them. I'll, I'll slash them all out. All right, here, uh, these have nothing in common. So I'm going to use two sets of parentheses. Numbers that multiply to be negative 12. There's one possibility. And it's the possibility that works as long as I get the signs right. And I'm going to get that as a negative 6 and a positive 2. And then they add up to be negative 4. All right, this one's going to be a couple steps. Here I'm going to take out a factor of 2. So it's x squared minus 49 after I divide those numbers by 2. All right, but then I'm going to factor this. So this is actually a difference of two squares. So actually I could use two sets of parentheses. There's an x minus 7 and an x plus 7. All right, I'm also going to bring that 2 down because that's part of the problem as well. So I had two things to factor there. All right, again, these have nothing in common. So I'm going to use one, I'm sorry, two sets of parentheses. Uh, let's see, it's x times x. The only way to get 8 is 4 and 2. So I need a negative 4 and a positive 2. If I add those, I get negative 2. If I multiply them, I get negative 8. All right, so that takes care of all the factoring. So I don't want to get this confused with the original problem. So I'm going to cross out the original terms. So this way I could see in white what it is I have to cancel. All right, now the way we call this canceling is very loose language, but we take a factor from the numerator and a factor in the denominator that match. So I'll notice here that the x minus sevens match. So I'm dividing the bottom by x minus seven and I'm dividing the top by x minus seven. Okay, so you're, we call that canceling like factors. All right, next step, uh, find another factor. All right, and here we have another one. We got x minus, or x plus two with x plus two. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's it for the binomials. Now we have a factor of two here, and I got a factor of two here. And they cancel as well. All right, so what's left? Well, it turns out what's left I'm going to multiply across. I got an x minus 4 as the only term in the numerator. And then in the denominator, it looks like I've got two terms x minus 6 and an x plus 7. There you have it. So that is the answer to this problem. There's nothing else that I could cancel. So that is example 1. Now we're going to see example two. Here is example two. Now for example two, we have another division problem. So I'm going to switch this again to multiplication. And you switch it to multiplication just by flipping the second fraction. So in other words, the first fraction stays exactly the way it is. And we'll leave that 
numerator just the way it is. So the only thing that changes is that when I change this to multiplication, I write the new fraction with the denominator of the old and the numerator of the new. And I put the numerator from the old and the denominator of the new. Okay, so that's the process of switching those. All right, next step, factor. So if they have nothing in common, like these three terms have nothing in common, I'm going to use two sets of parentheses. 32, 8, and 4. So I'm going to use 8 and 4. Looks like they add up to be 12. There's no negatives. Here we have something in common. I could divide them both by 10 and an x. So I'm going to use one set of parentheses because they have something in common. So I'm going to take a 10 and an x out. So there'll be an x. Let's see, 10 times 3. And then, uh, yeah, 10x times 3 is 30x. So it all works there. So we factor that out. All right, here we're going to divide by 5. So we're going to divide by 5. Let's see, what do we get? We get x plus 4 divided everything by 5. All right, next step. Let's take this numerator. Let's factor out an x. So I have an x in common, so I factor out the x. So let's see, I get x squared minus 9x plus 18. All right, but it turns out I could even factor this some more. And since there's nothing in common there, I'm going to use two sets of parentheses. 18 is 6 and 3 when I multiply it. But I want them to add up to be a negative 9. So it's going to have to be a negative 3 and a negative 6 because they multiply to be 18, but they add up to be negative 9. I'm going to bring this x up here too. All right, now everything is completely factored. So I'm going to cross out the original problem. So that was the original problem. That was the original problem. This is a second step, so I'm going to cross that out. Here was the original problem. Here was the original problem. So now I'm only looking at the stuff that's in white that's not crossed out. And now, again, I'm going to cancel, which means I'm going to divide top and bottom by common factors. So here I got an x minus 3 and an x minus 3, common factors. One from the numerator, one from the denominator, gone. All right, here's an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. Uh, all right, let's see what else we have. Well, we got an x over here and an x over here. And that covers it. Okay, kind of messy. And it's really easy to get this to, to look extremely messy if you're not neat. And I'm trying my best to be neat here, but... The only thing left in the numerator is the x plus 8 and the x minus 6. So the x plus 8, x minus 6. Alright, so now let's take a look at the denominator. So in the denominator I have a 10, I have a 5, I'm going to multiply those together and get 50. And there you have it. So that's the final answer. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and text lessons. Take care.